All right, we have the new Instant Pot Duo Crisp with Ultimate Lid here, and we are excited to give you a review on what we think about it, uh, what we love, what you need to know before you buy, and then what you'll need to know to start cooking in it. We have here, we have here the Instant Pot Duo Crisp. This is the eight quart. The box will not mention anything about the lid on this one. This will be the Instant Pot Duo Crisp. And it's got two different lids. It has a separate pressure cooking lid and it has an air fryer lid, which is the one we have on top. These ones you can buy on pretty much any internet retailer. Yes, on you can Amazon buy them in stores. Other retailers. Mm -hmm. And the Target exclusive one is unique, the ultimate lid, because it has a single lid that you use for both pressure cooking and air frying. Right. It's, so, it's not as tall. No, it's not. It's wider. This one right here is a six and a half quart compared to our eight quart, but you can see they take up a spare amount of room. So if you are looking for how to use the Instant Pot Duo Crisp, nothing about the lid. Um, we have another video that we'll link to, so go ahead and check that out. And we're going to be focusing on the Duo Crisp Ultimate Lid. So I'm going to put this one down so we get a little more counter space. So should we turn this to the side like this so we can, so we can see, see it? Yeah. So um, how you open the lid is the first thing you need to learn. Okay, so you'll see on the lid, it's got this locked icon, this unlocked icon, and then it's got this little arrow over and up. If you put it in unlocked mode, it still doesn't open. You have to be actively pushing the lid over and it just pops right up right there. So should we talk about the, the different parts and cleaning, like the housing, whatnot first? Sure. Okay, so this, what you call without the pots in it or anything, this right here is the housing. This is what has the heating element that does the cooking. It's also, um, you cannot put liquid in this. Um, I will often put like a wooden spoon just across the tops. That way if I'm cooking quick, I don't just toss liquid in in a hurry right. and not have the pot you in place. You always have to cook in your inner pot. Whether you're pressure cooking, sauteing, or air frying, you have to have the inner pot in place. So, and to clean this housing, you just use a damp cloth or a very damp sponge. You don't want it to be like super gloppy, drippy water. You want it to be like squeezed out almost all the way and just kind of do what you can. We'll get a little bit of soap on it and clean the inside and then we'll wash the sponge out and get, do rinse with the damp water. So this is the inner pot. Um, it is wider. If, you've, if you're have if you familiar with the regular six quart Instant Pot pots, they're taller and a little bit skinnier. This one is wider. It easily fits an eight inch cake pan in it, um, which is nice for pot and pot and for cooking a little bit bigger cheesecakes if you're interested. Yeah, so I think the reason that they did this is so that you have more surface area for browning. So you could probably fit a small chicken in here. Yeah, chicken, like what, three, four pound chicken. Yeah, one of our favorite things to do is to pressure cook like a pasta and then sprinkle the cheese on top and use the air fryer function to brown up that cheese. Okay, so we've talked about that. And then this pot is dishwasher safe if you choose to do it. Um, if you put it in the dishwasher, there is a small risk of the pot becoming a little bit discolored, like little dots. What do you call that, Mom? Yeah, I don't know. Little <laughs> dots on the bottom of your Instant Pot. It doesn't affect its ability to cook or anything. I tend to baby my pots, plus these things take up a ton of dishwasher space, so I usually hand wash all the pieces of my Instant Pot. And I usually put the pot in the bottom because I have room. I don't. There's just the two of us at home now, so we have two plates and that, that fits well. We have to buy more forks because we eat so much food <laughs> now. Anyways, okay, so we'll talk about the ultimate lid, which yes. is kind of the big thing. I don't know what's the best way to show them. This, this lid is not removable. Nope, it's got a nice big sturdy hinge on there, which is convenient in that you don't have to find two places in your pantry or your cupboard to keep it but it is a little bit inconvenient because when you lift it, you have to lift the full weight of the whole machine. And it's pretty, like, I'm not the strongest person, but it's it's pretty heavy. That sounded kind of dramatic. <laughs> this is where the steam comes out. We've got an air intake valve and we've got an air vent here. Okay, so what's the official name for this? This is the pressure cooker cover. One of the things I really love about this that I think Instant Pot was really smart when they did is that when you're pressure cooking something, you don't want to clean off the air fryer component every single time because it's got like heating element and 
like a fan behind it and it's tedious to clean. And so Instant Pot was really smart and they created this pressure cooking lid cover where it's kind of integrated all in one. And so it's got this red dot here. Yes, you can't pull it out. It's really securely in place, but as soon as you push the red button, it kind of tilts forward. Um, the first time I tried it, I did not have a finger in the inner holder loop, also official name, <laughs> inner holder loop, and it kind of fell and clattered all over the pan and it was a little startly. But this is the um, pressure cooking cover. Right, it has this black notch at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And when you want to put it back on, you have to put this black notch into the hole first, and then you can snap it into place. This pressure cooking lid cover has every feature you would have on a traditional pressure cooker lid, just all integrated into the cover. So you've got your uh, anti-block shield, which protects the steam release valve, and you've got your float valve. You can still take this out to wash it, and I recommend doing that every time you use it. Just pop this little mini gasket off, and just pull it right out from the other side. When you put it back together, I often will get it in place, and then I use my pinky finger to kind of push it up, hold it in place while I put that mini gasket back on. Um, that's something I like to do right as I'm washing the lid. I will take it off, remove it, and replace it after it's cleaned because this little piece, if you lose it, you cannot pressure cook. It will not work. And so I tend to be extra cautious because I'm very good at losing things. And right now, since this is a new pressure cooker, they don't have a replacement um, for this lid yet. So. Um, you just need to be careful with that. This is your traditional steam release valve. Um, it comes right out to wash. If you cook like a foamy food, like a pasta or an oatmeal or something, sometimes foam can go up through the steam release and get in there. So you just pull it out and you wash it. There is inside of this, there's this little tiny white silicone piece. And if you pull it out at an angle, it can damage and pull that um, piece off. Ask me how I know. <laughs> and so you always have to be careful to put it in place right straight on top, just right like that. Yeah, it just snaps into place. And one thing you do need to know before you buy is that you are not able to take off this gasket or the gasket surrounding the steam release valve. They are attached in place with these little screws. And um, we confirmed with Instant Pot that they are not removable. So, um, I like to have separate valves for like making cheesecakes. Separate cake. gaskets. Oh, yes, separate gaskets for making cheesecakes and other like more mild foods. So that is something to keep in mind. Because um, this silicone gasket will absorb odors. So if you're cooking something with onions or, or barbecue sauce or chili, sesame oil, it will absorb some of the um, the odor. Generally, it does not transfer to your food. No, it's only very, very picky, delicate items like cheesecake. And, and this also is another rubber gasket. But generally, this is on top of mm -hmm. your Instant Pot, but they have hidden it inside. So this um, just gives it support. It hooks right into this little notch. So you put this on. Can see. snap it into place. It's really, really cool. I, again, I really like the way they designed this. And then you, when you close it, you have to close it firmly so it clicks into place. Good job, Mom. <laughs> and when you're pressure cooking, your steam is going to come out right here. Mm -hmm. um, usually you'll see it coming out the steam release, but it's hidden here, mm -hmm. which has several benefits. Yeah, it's not as sputtery like when you do a quick release and you've got lots of liquid in your pot for like a soup. Sometimes you can get little soup like sputters out and it's usually really loud. This one is a little bit more quiet, I think because it's hidden within the inner air fryer lid. Yeah, piece. it sort of blocks that swoosh of steam, mm -hmm. diverts it over to here. And so it's a little gentler. You don't need, um, on the other Instant Pot, sometimes they had a diversion thing, yes. so it would divert away from your cabinets. Um, but this kind of replaces that, although you do need to be aware that this will not fit under your cabinets when the lid is open. Yes. Um, so what we have found when we tested it, we can set it all up so it's facing us, and then if we give it a little bit of a twist, it twists enough so that the steam comes up and goes away from the cabinets instead of going um, right up under your cabinets, which could cause damage and warping. Yeah, so uh, just a quarter turn and pulling it out from under the cabinets gave us enough room so that we could pressure cook on our countertops. Yeah. So that was really nice. 
Um, as for cleaning, this piece right here, it says it's dishwasher safe. Again, I always hand wash. On the top rack of the dishwasher. Yes, top rack only with this gasket, it's top rack only. Um, but when they say like use a damp cloth to clean the lid, they're not talking about the pressure cooker cover. They're talking about the rest of the lid that's over here. So did we cover everything with this? I think so. Let's talk about the air fryer portion. Okay, so with the air fryer portion, you have just your classic heating element that you have on like an oven. Um, stove top, not an oven, stove top. And then behind it, it has just this little fan that spins and kind of blows that hot air around everything in your Instant Pot. Um, the user manual recommends having at least five inches of space around the um, air intake and the air, I don't know, release. hot air release, I don't know. The hot air comes out this spot and you need to have at least five inches of space between that and like a wall or. And it is hot, so you don't want to have your hands or your face I mean, Close if you're a little it. bit have chilly hands, you can kind of hold your hand a little <laughs> bit away and warm it up while you're cooking. But yeah, it does get hot. And then you um, would clean this with just a damp rag. Once again, that very lightly squeeze most of the liquid out, soapy, and do your best to kind of get up there with the fan. It doesn't often get up that far. Sometimes a little bit of grease will transfer, but just do your best to get it clean and it, it, it does a good job. So um, I guess we'll talk about choosing a button now. Yeah, I really think they've done a good job of organizing the buttons. Yeah, it's got a nice, it's got a dial button combo where you press the button and then you use your dial as a selector. And one of the features that we really love about this is the new dot matrix. Display. So the traditional Instant Pot has like the regular like digital clock display. I don't know what's LED name. or something. It's got the, so like the numbers are, it would talk to you through like letters that it could make out of like a digital clock format. But they've added a little dot matrix display below so that it actually has words so you can read it. So when just it beeps at you to like lock the lid in place, your cover is missing, you selected natural release. Right, it will actually say that on the screen. It'll say natural release if you've selected natural release or it'll say pulse release or yeah. quick release. It has three different releases that you can choose. Yeah, it's, it's really intuitive. I'm really impressed with the way they've moved this display forward. All right, so to make any of the meals on our site, you really just need two pressure cooking buttons, the pressure cook button and the saute button. Um, one of the things I like about this display is that all of the pressure cook functions are on the left-hand side and all of the air fry functions are on the right-hand side. Um, and if you're using any of the buttons on the pressure cook side, you must have the inner, uh, inner pressure cooking cover in place. Um, and if you're using any of the air fryer ones, you have to have the, uh, the cover taken out. It won't let you progress um, if those are still in place. So first let's talk the saute button. Um, we use the saute button to sear meats, to um, saute vegetables, and then to simmer after cooking. Um, so a number of our recipes will have you brown the meat or um, saute the veggies before you start. So as you can see, we've got six levels of saute here. It actually tells you the temperature it cooks at, which I think is super cool. Um, and it goes from 338 Fahrenheit to, you have to hit temperature, and then you can change the temperature down. The low is um, 203 Fahrenheit. And they also, in the user manual, tell you how to change it to Celsius. So if that's what you're used to cooking with, you can absolutely switch that over. Um, these lower temperatures would be for like a simmer. When I cook, I generally just cook everything at a level four. Mom likes to go up to the highest one to, um, to sear her meats and then down to like a three for her vegetables. So as always, do what works best for you. Um, so when you have that in place, you need to have your lid open to saute and you select the temperature you want and you hit start. And again, I really love this. It lets you know that it is currently preheating the pot. For searing meats or vegetables, you're going to want your pot to be hot before you add the ingredients. Um, the one exception to that is butter. I'll sometimes just toss the butter in the pot so it melts while the pot heats up. But especially with like oils, you'll, you'll get it hot first. Um, so this little uh, progress bar shows you how far along the preheating section it is. And then it'll light up along the cooking section and this timer will count down. Um, this just means that the saute setting will run for 30 minutes and then turn off. You can adjust it, but I never do because I just use it until I'm done using it and then I hit cancel and move on to my other cooking function. Um, so this pot, I think we mentioned previously, it's domed and so when you add your, oh, 
You'll notice it beeped at me. It didn't like it. says place inner pot. It wants me to put it back. Um, one thing that's fun about this one is it has a lot more beeps and boops that tell you information than um, other models of Instant Pots do. Um, but while you're cooking in there, if something starts cooking too quick, you can lift up your pot and it might beep at you and you can just do what you want anyways because you know what you're cooking and the pot just knows that, or the housing just knows that the pot was missing. Um, so you'll go ahead and cook. And then once you're done um, with the, the saute function, you're ready to start pressure cooking. You'll hit cancel, turn off the saute function, and then hit pressure cook. Wants the lid closed, so we'll go ahead and do that. And then it's gonna want me to lock it in place. It'll tell you slide to lock lid. And now it's happy. So now it says pressure cook, and you'll notice it's flashing. Um, other models of Instant Pot, you could push this to save favorites, but this one, it just, you select pressure cook and you move on. So to adjust the time, you press the time button. Um, say we're cooking rice, we'll cook it for three minutes or four minutes if you're at altitude. And then um, it does not have a high or low pressure, so it just cooks at high pressure. And then you can, if you choose to, you can adjust your steam release here. You can say you want a pulse release, a quick release on the far right, and a natural release is the far left. Um, you can set that now, or you can change that anytime in the future. Hit start, and it tells you it's preheating, and this progress bar will um, continue. There's three of them. And then the same for the cooking, and then the keep warm setting. Um, while it is preheating, um, the cook time will stay the same. And once the water or liquid inside has come up to enough pressure to push that little float valve up, um, but it hasn't reached the internal pressure point needed to cook, it will tell you do not open lid along this progress bar, but it will not um, start counting down the cook time until the first of these cooking bar uh, starts flashing. And then once again, like once the cook time has ticked down and has ended, you'll see a flashing light begin over on this keep warm side. And then this will start to count up from zero. If I wanted to change the steam release, I can do that now. And if I wanted to change the time, I can do that now. To change the time, you have to, you have to hit the start button to lock that in place. And it tells you, which is so great. Um, and then there we go. Okay, so now that we've explained the buttons, let's go ahead and do a water test. Uh, the water test is just, it runs you through the motions of everything you'd be doing in a recipe, but it does so with water, so if you forget something, you don't have to worry about the results. It's a nice, easy way to get familiar with the machine. Right, to learn how it works, and so you'll see how the steam comes out, and yep. uh, go ahead and open so it. Step one, we'll open it up. Again, I always like to check that you've got your inner pot in place first. For me, that's step one. Step two, check your lid, since we intend to be pressure cooking. We're going to put the uh, lid cup, the pressure cooking cover in place. Again, match up this black tab and this little steam release valve goes in there. And you just push it till you hear a click. Go ahead and close We're that. Get, oh, add our water. Always add water, yes. You need to add your liquid to the pressure cooker, otherwise it won't cook. Generally, we do a water test with a cup of water. The, um, this model says it is requires a minimum of two cups. Mm -hmm. However, when we tested it, cooking white rice, one cup worked just fine for mm -hmm. our rice. So we're gonna go ahead and do that with our water test. That way it will come to pressure a little quicker. Close it nice. Make sure you lock it in place by sliding the slider. And we'll hit pressure cook. You can adjust the time. I'm just gonna do it. It's, this one has a zero minute cook time, which uh, people who pressure cook broccoli, they like that. Should I set it? I'll set it for one minute. Then we'll hit start. Yeah, so a zero minute cook time for broccoli just means it comes to pressure. Then as soon as it reaches pressure, it will automatically release the pressure. Now this uh, model does not have a manual pressure release, so you have to set your pressure release um, on the front. Since this is just a water test, we can go ahead and do a quick pressure release. So we'll press it twice and that says quick pressure release right there. It tells you exactly what's going to happen and we'll go ahead and let it come to pressure. Perfect. So on this model we've noticed that as it's getting very close to reaching that internal pressure, um, a little bit of steam will start coming out of this steam venting. That does not mean that it's malfunctioning, that's working as it should. Um, you can see a little bit coming now. It's in the cooking process, somewhere between one minute. 
it vents a little bit of steam, but as long as it's steam coming out this pressure release and not coming out the sides, you're good to go. All right, so it'll switch over to quick release. If at any time during the cooking process you start to see like foam, oh, that's perfect. I think your pulse. <laughs> if at any time during the cooking process you begin to see foam coming out of the pressure release, <laughs> you, you never want foam coming out. Yeah. So you just switch it over to natural pressure release. So, but just by pushing the steam release button, you can you can push it as many times as you need to um, during that release process. I'm going to release the remaining steam. Right now the display reads quick release, do not open lid. If I were to try, we did try in the name of science, this thing is locked in place. It's not going to let you open it until it reads like okay to open lid on this front panel. Till the pressure has dropped and the steam release valve has dropped and you can actually hear, hear it drop. Cool. And I give you a little dingling, it says it's okay to open lid so you can go ahead and open it up. And you'll notice all of these steam driplets are running down, oh I'll go ahead and can't so I will close it later. Um, you'll notice all of these steam droplets just running down the housing into this back thing. That's a little bit different. Yeah, it's called a condensation cup and it just slides out. But we've noticed that um, this model, there's always a little bit of water in the condensation mm -hmm. cup. So you just need to be sure and empty that every time after pressure cooking. Yeah. Sometimes you want to close the lid, like we'll cook the rice and like fluff the rice and then I'll close the lid while I finish up the other elements of dinner. Sometimes if it's just been at pressure, it's hard to close the lid uh, because that, that steam that's rising is enough that makes that makes the pot kind of think it's at pressure. Yeah, there's pressure inside. Um, so to do that, if it's not closing easy, you just go ahead and leave the lid pushed over and hold down while it pushes the pressure out and then it'll let you close it and lock it in place. Um, so I think, I think that's everything. If you have more questions, please let us know in the comments below. We'd love to answer them. And be sure and like and subscribe for more great videos. Thanks so much. We'll see you another, on the next video.